Good afternoon. Do you mind if we start, guys? So, how are you? Hmm? Have you watched Champions League? Who will win Champions League this year, in your opinion? Who? City. That's likely. I was a big supporter of the Paris Saint-Germain, but we'll see. Anyway, Champions League apart. Today we will start a new topic, that is the flow in pipes and pumps. As usual, I will underline the main concept, what you need to bring home, and especially what you need to pass the exam in a brilliant way. So please pay attention to what we will do today and for the remaining part of my lectures. So, pipe and pumps. Let me give a very brief summary of the main goal of today's lecture. When you have the flow in a pipe, so you have a certain pipe, length L, diameter D. Fluid is flowing with a certain velocity D, which corresponds to a certain flow rate Q. Every time you have a pipe, you have something called energy losses. We can classify energy losses into two big families. Major and minor losses. They are called major and minor because you can imagine that major, major losses are considerably larger than minor ones. The aim of today's lecture is to be able to compute major and minor losses into a pipe systems. Minor losses are due to local events. We will understand what do I mean by local events, but for now, please consider that they are depend on some changes in your pipe. For example, if you have an obstruction, if you have a sudden expansion. Major losses are due to friction. Friction is due to shear stresses which are due to viscosity. There are two main differences between major and minor losses. First, their magnitude. Major losses are usually considerably bigger than minor ones. The second difference is when they arise. Minor losses are present only when there are some specific, particular, local events. It means that you can have one, two, one million minor losses, or even you cannot have minor losses at all. Major losses are due to viscosity. Viscosity is an intrinsic characteristic of a fluid. You cannot get rid of the viscosity, right? If you cannot get rid of the viscosity, it means that 
whatever pipe you will have, you will always have major losses in your system. Okay? So, if at the exam, one of the questions will tell you, is it true that you can neglect major losses in your pipe system? You will say no. Okay? If the question says, is it possible that to have no minor losses in your system? Yes. We will identify. This sketch summarizes the difference between energy losses. Now, when classifying losses, regarding to major one, the main goal is to compute a quantity called F. F is known as friction factor. And we, can, we will see how to compute the friction factor if our flow is laminar or is turbulent. This is the summary of today's lecture. Let's move on. So, as I mentioned before, major and minor losses. Minor losses are due to local events. For example, an obstruction in your pipe, a change in the topology of the pipe. Major losses are due to viscosity, so you will always have it. Let me define two quantities, CP and CF. CP is called pressure drop coefficient. CF is called skin friction coefficient. The pressure drop coefficient is obtained by dividing the delta P, the pressure drop or the change in the pressure in your pipe, by a certain quantity, 1 over 2, rho u power 2. The skin friction coefficient, coefficient is obtained by dividing tau w, which is the shear stress, by the same quantity. So, so far, let's bring home the definition of the two coefficients. Let's have a look at this pipe. Imagine that in this pipe there is a certain fluid which is flow from left to right with a certain constant velocity and a certain constant flow rate. We want to write the equilibrium of forces in this pipe. The equilibrium of forces in this pipe tells you that the difference in the pressure is equilibrated by the shear stress. Let me do a sketch. We have this pipe. Fluid is going in this direction. This is D. This is L. You have the pressure drop, which is balanced by wall forces. The pressure drop, the force due to the pressure drop, is delta P times the cross-sectional area. P diameter power 2 over 4. Balanced by skin friction. Tau W times the surface of the pipe, pi d L. This is just a force equilibrium. 
¿Ok? We can do this. We can do this. And we can rewrite delta P equal to 4 L over D tau W. This stems from the force equilibrium. Perfect. Now, let's multiply left hand side and right hand side by the same quantity. This quantity. So we obtain delta P divided by 1 over 2 rho u power 2 equal to 4 L over D tau W 1 over 2 rho u power 2. Ok? It looks like that this is CP. The pressure drop coefficient. Do you agree? You will also agree that this is CF, the skin friction coefficient. CP equal to 4 L over D CF. Which I can rewrite as CP D over L equal to 4 CF. Ok? This quantity is the friction factor F. Which is computed as 4 CF. This is the friction factor, the friction coefficient. Now, Let's try to quantify it. Let's try to find an expression, an expression of F. And as I mentioned before, we need to compute it for laminar and for turbulent flow. Let's consider a laminar flow. A laminar flow between two plates is governed by Poiseuille law, right? Poiseuille law tells you that the velocity in your pipe is 2 u bar 1 minus r power 2 r0 power 2 where r0 is the radius of your pipe R0 is the radius of your pipe. R varies between 0 and R0. U bar is the mean velocity. The peak velocity is 2 times U bar. From fluid mechanics 1, you should know that tau wall is minus dynamic vis uh, viscosity derivative of u with respect to r computed in r0 we can do a bit of math and we end up by saying that the friction coefficient F for a laminar flow can be computed by this relation. 64 over the Reynolds number. When your flow is laminar and someone asks you, could you please tell me the expression of the friction factor? You just say F equal to 64 over Reynolds. So you just insert, please tell me. So what's the difference between if I have a little number for a lattice or if I have a little number for a diameter? So what's the difference between R, E, R, or R, E, D? Immediately.
from these derivations, I can write that f is equal to 32 mu divided by rho u bar radius r0, right? Do you agree that the diameter is 2 times r0? Okay, perfect. So, friction coefficient for laminar flow, F equal to 64 divided by Reynolds. This relation tells you that if the Reynolds number increases, the friction reduces. Okay? You can imagine that this is very intuitive. If the Reynolds number goes up, it means that the viscosity is going down. Less viscosity, less friction. That's why F will reduce. Okay? The situation is a bit more complicated when you go turbulent. Now, some of you asked me if you have to remember these derivations. Uh, the exam, you do not need to remember the derivations, okay? For me, it's important that you get the concept and you understand when a given formula should be applied. So, the main message you have to take home is this one. When your flow is turbulent, the friction factor can be, com can be approximated by a certain formula that is 0 0.316 Reynolds to the power minus 1 over 4. These two formulas tell you how the friction coefficient vary as a function of the Reynolds number. If we come back to this sketch, then we can say F laminar 64 over Reynolds. Turbulent 0 0.316 Reynolds minus 0 0.25. This is the main message. Now we have to introduce another ingredient and understand how to use this message. Who is not convinced about what we have been saying so far? Are you all convinced, yes or no, please? Thank you. Let's move forward. You have a pipe. Your pipe can be made, for example, by glass, or can be made by concrete, steel, iron, anything else, right? You can imagine that different material will have different roughness. And the roughness might have a strong impact on the friction in your pipe. A very smooth pipe will allow the flow to go faster than a very rough pipe. Or, if you want to see the problem from the other viewpoint, a very rough pipe, pipe um, surface will induce some very strong, big energy losses in your system, if compared to a very smooth one. So the roughness of the pipe is a very important ingredient when computing the friction factor. The two formulas we saw before are valid only for very super extra smooth pipe. Okay? 
but in real life there is a certain roughness. A couple of centuries ago, a scientist called Moody derived this chart experimentally. This chart is a way to compute the friction coefficient in a pipe as a function of Reynolds number and the roughness of the pipe. If you are thinking, do I need to remember this graph? No. It will be provided in case you need it. But it's important that we analyze this graph. In this graph, we can identify some regions. Okay, there is this region, laminar flow, here the friction factor scales like 64 over Reynolds, so just that line. It means that you can use the formula or you can intersect the graph, you will have the same result, okay? This is valid until Reynolds is less than 2,300, more or less. So laminar, you can use the graph, the formula is the same thing. When the flow becomes turbulent, the graph becomes more complicated. So what you have to do? I will tell you the Reynolds number of your problem. For example, 10 to the power 5, this one. I will tell you the roughness of your pipe. For example, uh, the roughness is measured as epsilon over D, is a normalized uh, roughness, okay? So what you see on the right side is dimensional, dimensionless. I will tell you that the roughness the uh, normalized roughness of your pipe is, for example, 0 0.01. You enter with the two values. You intersect the graph. You find a certain point, and you read the friction factor on the left. This is how to use Moody's chart. So you need just to know epsilon and the Reynolds number. You enter in the graph, find a point, read what is happening on the left side. It is very important to understand something else. You can see, you can see this dashed curve. This dashed curve tells you that on its right, the flow is fully turbulent. You can see that the lines are almost straight. It means that when the flow is very turbulent, the flow, the friction factor, does not depend anymore on the Reynolds number. Please have a look at the graph. What do I mean? If the Reynolds number is 10 to the power 7 and epsilon is equal epsilon over d is equal to 0 0.03 I found this point right I go on the left and I read this value if the Reynolds number is 10 to the power 9 10 to the power 8 I go here and I will read the same values right if it's something in between, I will read the same value. If it's 10 to the power 12, I will read the same value. Do you agree or not? It means that when the Reynolds number is very, very, very high, the flow does not depend anymore on the Reynolds number itself, but will depend only on the roughness of the pipe. Please. 
and the limits and the limits beyond which and the limits beyond which you can ignore the mental effects is around uh, is this card. It changed but the limits from which you ignore this effect is the it's delineated by the dashed line. Yes, exactly. Everything on the right of the dash line tells you this, you are not more the, you do not depend anymore on the Reynolds number. Okay? If your pipe is very smooth, epsilon is more or less zero, you enter in the graph with the value of the Reynolds number and you intersect Please look at the screen. You intersect the first curve where there is written smooth. And you read the corresponding value. This is how to use Moody's chart. Now we will make a couple of examples. I believe that we will all benefit from summarizing what is happening now. If I will tell you to ignore the roughness of a pipe in order to compute the friction coefficient, friction factor, call as you like it. You just need to use the two formulas I showed you before, depending on the fact that the flow can be laminar or turbulent. That's it. But roughness can play a very important role in your pipe. The only way to account for the roughness of the pipe is to use Moody's chart. In Moody's chart, we can identify immediately a region on the left corresponding to the laminar flow. That is this part. This part tells you that F scales like 64 over Reynolds, like the formula. That's it. The situation becomes more complicated when you go turbulent. In this case, you have to enter in this graph with your value of the Reynolds number, for example, this one, your value of epsilon, for example, this one, intersect the graph in a certain point and read what is happening on the left. A very important take-home message is that there is this dashed line curve which tells you that everything on the right of it is a very fully developed turbulent flow and the flow, the friction factor coefficient, will not depend anymore on the Reynolds number but will be sensitive only to the roughness of the pipe. I will be extremely happy to know if someone is not convinced about it. Should I assume that you are convinced, right? Please. If we don't have any roughness, then we use those formulas. If you do not have any roughness, you can use the formulas, or you can go into Moody's chart and intersect the bottom curve where there is written smooth. Do you see? Please. So if roughness the epsilon over delta so if roughness epsilon is equal to zero and therefore epsilon over delta is always zero, this this uh, the straight line is the entire graph, right? If epsilon is zero, the straight line on the left where there is written as moot is the only is the only relevant part of the graph. Shall we make some examples? Ah, if you want to know how Mr. Moody built this graph a couple of centuries ago, he did mm, some thousands of measurements like this one and built the graph point by point. I believe that he spends a considerable amount of time of his life to do, to do it. 
Let's make an example. You have a pipe. In this pipe, there is water with a certain density, a certain viscosity, which is flowing through a pipe of diameter one centimeter, length one meter. The velocity of the flow is 0 0.2 meters per second. We want to determine the energy loss due to the, to, due to the pressure drop. The energy loss due to the pressure drop is the energy loss due to major and minor contribution. So far we discussed just about major losses. Major losses are computed through this formula. Delta P is the friction factor times 1 over 2 rho u power 2 L over D. Do I need to remember this formula? No. So, let's use this formula. We know rho, we know the velocity, we know L, we know D, we need to find F, the friction coefficient. In order to choose F, we need to see if the flow is laminar or turbulent. I do not mention the roughness of the pipe, right? So forget about Moody. Let's go for the formulas, OK? Let's compute Reynolds. Reynolds is rho u d over mu. We just substitute and obtain Reynolds equal to 2,000. 2,000 laminar flow, f is 64 over Reynolds. In our case, f is 0 0.0325. We substitute this value here and obtain the delta p. Should I repeat? Should I need to repeat? So, we, w we have a certain pipe with a certain fluid. I will tell you the fluid characteristics and the geometry. We want to estimate the energy losses in this system. We need to compute the pressure drop. The pressure drop is the friction coefficient F times that quantity. 1 over 2 rho u power 2 L over D. We know all the ingredients except for F. We do not mention at all the roughness of the pipe. So I don't want to see Moody's chart. I need to use the formulas. I have two formulas. Which one is correct? They depend on the Reynolds number. Laminar or turbulent. Let's compute the Reynolds number. Let me ask you, given the data, the input of the problem, am I in the position to compute the Reynolds number? Yes, I know all the ingredients. So I compute Reynolds. Reynolds equal to 2000, laminar flow, F is 64 over Reynolds. We compute F, we put it in the formula and obtain the delta P. That's it. It is extremely likely that you will face problem like this one. Please. So uh, the question states that the Turing can ever be lost due to pressure drop. So do we have to convert the Pascals to uh, joules? One second. Please. Is, uh, that up, up until which number the Reynolds number is laminar? One second. Is it okay. You need to compute the delta P. We will classify later something related to the energy. Okay. But so far, let's stick to the delta P. Guys. Are you convinced or not about what we did? 
Let's move on. Please tell me. When we use, okay, if I do not mention the roughness, use the equations. So the roughness is usually given, you don't have to calculate. No, the roughness is an input of the problem. Okay. If I will tell you the roughness is 0 0.02, move this chart, okay? If the roughness is non-zero, use Moody chart. <laughs> Guys, please have a look at this. This is the summary of major losses, which is equivalent to this. The aim is to compute F, the friction factor. F depends on the Reynolds number, so we should distinguish between laminar and turbulent flow, and might also depend on the roughness of the pipe, if the roughness of the pipe is an input of the problem. If you do not see anything about the roughness, you will lose the formulas. If the roughness is non-negligible, you have to use Moody's chart. You, have, you are in the position, in any case, to compute F. Then you substitute in the equation on the bottom and you obtain the pressure drop. This is the pressure drop due to major losses in a pipe. As I mentioned before, major losses are due to viscosity. Viscosity will always exist in a certain fluid. It means that you can never neglect the presence of a major loss. Okay? But in addition, you can have some minor losses, which we expect to be considerably smaller than the major one, but non negligible. Let's see this in phase. As I mentioned, minor losses are due to local events. Local events is something that is changing the flow topology. You change the direction of the flow, you obstruct the flow, you change the cross-sectional area and change the velocity. Look at these examples. When you have any bend an expansion, an obstruction, you can see that there will be some small vortices arising in your pipe. When there are vortices in your pipe, vortices do a very important thing. They subtract energy to the system. Vortices eat energy. Okay? So even as very small vortex, can subtract, can reduce the energy of your pipe. A change in the flow topology will trigger the presence of vortices, which will subtract energy to your system. That's why we have minor losses. Minor losses are due to the vorticity generated by a change in the topology of your flow. Okay? Minor losses can be computed through this formula. As I mentioned before, minor losses are local events. You can imagine that in my pipe I can have millions of obstructions, for example. I will have one million of minor losses. Each single minor loss will depend on the velocity of the flow where the local event is. UB in this formula is the velocity of the flow where there is a certain minor loss. Each minor loss will be characterized by a certain coefficient K. K is a way to measure 
how energy gets dissipated by the minor loss. K coefficient are estimated experimentally. Something very important to remember, these two. When you have an entrance or an exit, k coefficient at 0.5 and 1, respectively. I will just show you this. You do not need to remember these things, but it's to show you that we can have many possible sources of minor loss in your system, like these ones, these ones, this. Every time you change your pipe, every time you change your flow topology, you will have a minor loss. You do not need to remember all these cases, no worries. I will be very happy if you will remember that when you have an entrance, you have 0 0.5, when you have an exit, you have 1. And as I mentioned before, you can have n minor losses. You will have n contribution to your equation. Let's quantify the impact of minor losses in your system. You have a pipe with a sharp entrance to the one you can associate a k coefficient equal to 0 0.5. And you have an exit to the one you can associate a, a coefficient k equal to 1. You can imagine that in this configuration, you will have a major loss due to the viscosity and two minor losses, one due to the entrance, one due to the exit. We want to study the pressure drop under three different configurations. First one, pipe is smooth without end losses. Second one, pipe is smooth and you have both the end losses. Scenario most compl uh, complicated, pipe is rough, it means that epsilon is non-zero, and there are end losses. First thing to do, we calculate the velocity of the flow. Why? Because we need to compute the Reynolds number. Reynolds number is of order 10 to the power 6. Flow is turbulent. You can use Moody or you can use the formula to compute the, um, the friction factor. I will suggest you to use the formula in this case, but they are equivalent. The pressure drop due to the major loss in the pipe system is 8.87 times 10 to the power 7 Pascal. Let's make things a bit more complicated. The pipe is still smooth, but there are end losses. It means that with respect to what we did before, we just have to add these two contributions. So we just add 0 0.5 and 1 in this equation. And we obtain 8.883 10 to the power 7 Pascal. Before we have 8.87, you can see immediately that the increment of the pressure, the decrement of the pressure drop when we consider minor losses is very, very small, right? It went from 8.87 to 
it's very small. Do you agree or not? If you agree, we can make the situation more complicated. Epsilon now is non-negligible. It means that you have to use Moody. You enter with the value of Reynolds, with the value of epsilon, and you read a friction factor equal to 0 0.02, which you will use in this formula. OK? You just substitute here and obtain this value. Before, the value was 8.8. Eight, eight, three. What happened? What happened? Having considered the roughness of the pipe has doubled the pressure drop. You can imagine from this very simple example that a change in the roughness of the pipe will always have a significant impact on the pressure drop, which is usually order of magnitude higher than the effect of minor losses, who is not convinced. What is the capital P in this case? Um, right? Yes. Velocity times the area, the cross-sectional area. OK, if you agree, I will finish here. Please, next lecture, we will finish this topic and will be very important for your exam.
Okay, is this on? Yeah. Okay.